Soy has a notorious reputation for being a testosterone killing food. It has been a widely held belief in modern times that it contributes to the feminization of men because it presumably lowers testosterone levels, increases estrogen, and negatively affects erection and sperm quality. The issue of soy being a testosterone killer has split the fitness industry, with some being advocates of avoiding it at all costs and others insisting that it does not affect testosterone levels at all. So in this video, I'm going to put an end to all the nonsense on both sides and present the cold hard facts about soy and testosterone. If you're new here, I'm Ben Richardson. I'm a personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, and a chemical engineer. For years, I suffered from low testosterone levels from being fat, lazy, and overweight. And it wasn't until I went through a pretty nasty breakup in college that I finally started to get a grip on my life. So I'm here to share what I've learned with other men so that they can improve their health and increase testosterone naturally just like I did. I post videos like this one every single week so make sure you go ahead and subscribe so that you're not missing out. Numerous studies have suggested that soy is responsible for lowering testosterone levels but most of these studies have only been recorded in animals. However, a few human studies have delivered similar results so let's take a closer look at these because after all we are human beings so that's where the money is. A 2000 2013 study showed that men who consumed 20 grams of soy protein every day for two weeks were found to have lower testosterone levels than another group of men who consumed 20 grams of whey protein over the same period of time. Seems like a pretty obvious conclusion that soy lowers testosterone, right? Another study in 2007 studied 12 men who were given 56 grams of soy protein for four weeks. Their serum testosterone levels decreased by 19% while consuming the soy protein, and then it increased within two weeks after they stopped eating it. Luteinizing hormone levels decreased during the four weeks of soy protein use, and then increased after they stopped using it. Luteinizing hormone, or LH, is important because it transports nutrients in the bloodstream down to the laid egg cells and the testes to fuel testosterone production, so that's why this hormone is relevant. High LH equals more fuel for testosterone production, and low LH equals less fuel for testosterone production. Now, that is definitely a massive oversimplification of what's going on, but I just wanted to give you a quick bird's eye view of why that's important. The researchers stated that hormonal changes did not reach statistical significance, but they did conclude that soy protein powder decreases serum testosterone levels in healthy, active men. Soy protein powder is a protein isolate derived from soy products similar to how whey protein powder is a protein isolate derived from milk. It's worth noting that most of the human studies that support the opinion that soy is a testosterone killer involved testing that observed the consumption of soy protein isolate. Soy protein contains a significant amount of phytoestrogens, which could be a factor that has influenced these results. It is only fair to mention that studies that suggest that soy negatively affects testosterone levels are somewhat flawed. Many are even lacking a control group. In a scientific study, a control group is important because the control group is either not given the treatment or it's given a placebo treatment. In our case, the treatment or element of interest is soy. The control group's results are then compared to those of the experimental group, which, as you may have guessed, is the group receiving the treatment. So that's pretty important information that's missing in most of these studies. Furthermore, most of these studies only focus on a small number of participants and therefore cannot accurately represent the majority of men. Most of these studies also failed to collect a crucial piece of data in the argument, how the subject's estrogen levels changed. So, these studies haven't even collected the data to support the claim that soy feminizes men because it increases estrogen levels. A story that went viral back in 2008 involved a man who was diagnosed with gynecomastia, also known as man boob syndrome, and this was attributed to his consumption of soy. But this man was also overweight, he led a sedentary lifestyle, and he also consumed
consumed copious amounts of junk food, fast food, and carry out food regularly. He just also happened to drink about half a gallon of soy milk every day. This story probably went viral without being fact-checked, which led many men to avoid soy because the implication was that soy kills testosterone, it increases estrogen levels, and it makes you grow a pair of boobs. The evidence in human trials that suggests that soy consumption lowers testosterone could just be limited to consuming soy protein powders. Raw soy foods were not considered, and the studies supporting this claim are also isolated and not numerous. When researching the effects of soy and testosterone levels, most of the evidence suggests that eating soy has a neutral impact on testosterone. Now, before we go any further, you might be thinking that I'm starting to sound like a soy advocate. Let the record show that I do not consider soy a part of my diet. I am not a vegan, and I think they're the ones who would benefit most from consuming soy. I also live in the United States where most soy is genetically modified, so I really don't eat it. My intention is to simply assess what the scientific literature says about it so that you don't have to. I'm not saying that you need to run to the grocery store and start eating tons of soy. The best example of soy's neutral effect on testosterone is found in an analysis report that evaluated data from multiple studies on this topic. In 2010, in the journal Fertility and Sterility, J.M. Hamilton Reeves et al. published an analysis of more than 30 human studies involving over 900 men. Now we're talking more relevant numbers. We're not just talking about 12 participants anymore. So the data from this report might give us a better idea of what's going on in most men when they eat soy. The researchers reported that in all of these studies, it was recorded that neither soy foods nor isoflavone supplements alter measures of bioavailable testosterone concentrations in men. I'll explain what an isoflavone is here in a second, so stick with me. The objective of this analysis report is quite specific. The researchers sought to, and I quote, determine whether isoflavones exert estrogen-like effects by lowering bioavailable testosterone. Through the evaluation of the effects of soy protein and isoflavone intake on testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, also known as SHBG, free testosterone, and free androgen index in men. What? What the hell are you talking about? What? What? Holy cow, that was a huge mouthful. Let me provide some background to help you understand what's going on. Could you excuse me for a second? I have to figure out what's going on. Soy contains active ingredients called isoflavones, which are phytoestrogens. And the prefix phyto just means that they come from plants. These compounds are believed to interfere with hormonal balance by raising estrogen levels, which obviously would affect testosterone. But here's the thing. Phytoestrogen mimics estrogen in the same way that injected testosterone from TRT mimics testosterone. When the hormonal system detects enough testosterone in the bloodstream, it signals to the body that it doesn't need to make more. Natural testosterone production shuts down and the body converts testosterone into estrogen. And this is to compensate for the excess injected testosterone. So in the same way, the hormonal system could detect enough estrogen and tell the body to stop converting testosterone into estrogen. This could actually increase testosterone production to compensate for the sufficient estrogen. According to the laws of nature and our current understanding of the endocrine endocrine system, this is certainly possible. But this is also pure speculation, so don't go telling all of your friends that soy increases testosterone because it shuts down the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Again, it's possible, but it's not like we have tons of data to support this possibility. If TRT that mimics testosterone can shut down testosterone production, then there is no reason to believe why the presence of phytoestrogens that mimic estrogen cannot shut down estrogen conversion. Some medical scientists believe this to be the case while others do not. The jury is still out on this while filming this video because further investigation is needed. So the whole point is that isoflavones mimic estrogen. So now that you have a little background on why they're relevant here, let's return to that analysis report we were just talking about. Remember that study I mentioned earlier where
where men who ate soy protein powders experienced a 19% decrease in testosterone? That study was actually included in this analysis report, and the conclusion was pretty adamant that no statistically significant effects occurred. I don't know about you, but a 19% decrease in testosterone levels over the course of only four weeks seems pretty significant to me. The analysis report verified the results and confirmed the 19% decrease in testosterone levels. However, they mention a vital piece of information that's extremely important in this study. Because this study only involved 12 men, any outlier data points could greatly impact the statistics. Turns out one of the subjects had abnormally high testosterone levels outside the normal ranges at the beginning of the study. This candidate experienced a significant decline in testosterone, and his testosterone levels never returned to baseline after the soy intake was stopped. Supporters of the suggestion that soy lowers testosterone levels never mention this exceptional candidate whenever they reference this study. The researchers also offered no explanation as to why this man's testosterone levels were abnormally high. But apart from this study, all the other studies found that no effects on hormonal levels were observed after consuming soy. If that's not enough to shut people up, another analysis was published back in 2021 that confirmed the 2010 analysis in another journal, Reproductive Toxicology. This report analyzed 41 studies from 2010 to 2020, analyzing data recorded in over 1,700 men. The authors concluded that there was no link between soy consumption and testosterone levels. So the evidence between these two analysis reports amounts to 71 human studies compiling data gathered from over 2,600 men. After hearing all this, if you are still concerned about soy, and I know this is going to absolutely blow some of you guys' minds, then don't eat it. <laughs> Unless you are a vegan, you can likely get all of your nutrients you need from other sources. If you eat meat, you will be fine without it. You may have watched this video and interpreted it as me defending soy. I am not implying that you need to eat soy. Like I mentioned before, I'm not a vegan and I live in the United States where most soy is genetically modified. As a consequence, I do not consume soy regularly and it has never been a part of my diet. However, soy does contain nutrients and amino acids that your body does need. If you are a vegan, soy is an excellent food with protein, amino acids, and many other micronutrients that will fuel your body well. There is only a small amount of evidence that soy is a testosterone killing food. And there is actually no evidence confirming that it feminizes men by increasing estrogen levels. But if you want my opinion, I say just get all of your nutrients from another source besides soy, especially if you live in the United States. Soy production is an absolute train wreck here. So my personal recommendation is to just avoid it anyway. Maybe you're sitting there dazed and confused confused after all this and you have no clue how to navigate the world of nutrition? I get it. Nutrition is a complex subject, but that's why I became a nutrition coach so I can help you out. I do offer coaching and you can learn more about it by heading down to the link in the pinned comments below and filling out the quick form down there. It only takes like one or two minutes. Once you do that, I'll reach out and we'll hop on a quick Zoom call so that we can chat about how I can help. So if you're interested, I look forward to hearing from you. But that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're new here and you've made it this far, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys and it helps me make the kind of content that you want to see when I hear from you directly. So don't be a stranger. If you made it to the end, I appreciate the support and I hope you got a ton out of this video too. Good luck in all of your efforts to boost testosterone naturally. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.